these are our partners, and as everybody said, we have the HSN, but with mental health crisis, it's not just mental health. The police, the housing, the ambulance, the community trust, so that was one of the challenges. Other challenges, as, as my colleague said, we have the only mental health vanguard, and the test bed, and the STP, and the whole thing going together. And how can you actually make the best of every one of it by, by making to fit together rather than having all these projects competing against, against each other? As I'm the last speaker, I'll just go through it quickly. You see, the challenge here, just very quickly if you look at what we're trying to do, combine researches together, technology together, a lot of the technology for mental health does not exist and it's difficult to measure. Mental health crisis, what is a mental health crisis? You can end up with 30 different definitions. You want a measurable definition after all. So we managed to find that and measure it and test it. The other thing before I show you my next slide, don't give me the answer, I guess I know it. What do you think of the mental health crisis management in the country? Is it good enough? <coughs> don't tell me, right? <laughs> but if you look at this, and I hope you are not a commissioner, just in Birmingham, we have liaison team in the big hospital, seeing about 450 patients every month, another hospital, third hospital, fourth hospital, fifth hospital with liaison teams. Is that good? 24 hours, seven days a week. We have place of safety, we have street triage, uh, we have home treatment, we have um, 111, we have crisis team, we have bed management, we have GPs, we have Samaritan, we have private sector, we have all of this. What do you think? Is that enough? And in the middle of that, you have a patient at the time of crisis, doesn't know what to do. The cost is high, the pathway is absolutely chaotic. I don't know when patients will fall into crisis. The only thing I have is phone call after phone call, patient in crisis, in chaos, police, ambulance, A and E, the whole thing. What I want to do, make the pathway to be like this. So basically, we are developing a care coordination center for the crisis care. It's all digital technology. In that care coordination center, you have a number of technologies coming in. One, my colleagues have already talked about, like a patient's portal. So now we're communicating with the patients directly, putting for them their crisis intervention plan digitally. We send to them the lithium level, the clozapine level. They send back to us all the scales we want from them. But also we have other technologies, which I'll just focus into. One is the predictive analytics. And I'll just get this through. Okay. So predictive analytics. And as my colleague said earlier on, how can you predict a mental health crisis? We're working with a company called Telefonica, but we had all the organization's paranoia, all the difficulties, around commercializations, data sharing with non-NHS, even with NHS becomes a problem, with non-NHS, information governance, ICO, the whole, the whole thing. Even um, just talking about commercialization, something beyond my ability to know who to talk to, how you get them. But now we actually have the agreement with them. We're starting seeing the predictive analytics coming and just part of the evolution we have primary objectives to know who's going to fall into crisis. I started seeing the secondary objectives becoming even more attractive than the primary objectives. How can you predict the pathway? How you can support people with packages of cares? How you get your staff to accept all of this? So that's the predictive analytics. The other, the other bit, I've, seen, I've shown you all this kind of pathway and among all this liaison team I have showed you, just the liaison team is almost about five million pounds. And then the home treatment team, and then the PGU, and then the street triage, we, you hit something like 10, 12 million pounds, but no communication. I don't know real time where the patients are, where the staff are, where the skill mix, who can do what. So we developed a CADI, a capacity and demand dash information, real time, you see where the patient's coming from, what the problem is on real time, where your staff skills are, and how can you match the capacity and demand real time. 
my colleague there was talking about the psychology of the staff, the psychology of the organization, how you get your staff to accept that. Technology. We have five years of electronic records, and we're good in using electronic records. We use Rio, whatever is good or bad. But the point is, most of my staff will not use it real time. So how can you develop a, a thinking of real time technology and moving them around? HR involvement, data sharing, data security. So hopefully, we are developing this new care coordination center with the patient's portal in it, predictive analytics in it, the CADI in it, bed management tool, and change the way you manage crisis care, it, that very chaotic way, in a straight pathway which depends on digital technology. Thank you.